Hey there, my name is Alex. I am the Silvermont, and this is my review of Forspoken on the PC, played via Steam. Disclaimer time, I received a review code for this title from Square Enix. And what is Forspoken? Well, it seems to be the culmination and evolution of various tech demos shown for Square's luminous engine over the years. What was it? Project Agni? Something like that. But they finally took shape in the form of an action-adventure game. I believe the only other game to come out of this engine has been Final Fantasy XV, a game I enjoyed but took some issues with, feeling to me as if it never hit its full stride, its full potential. As for Forspoken, it in a way, reminds me of Stranger of Paradise, the game I just call FF Chaos, in that the main character is from our modern world and thrust into a fantasy setting. Of course, the truth of Jack's situation was a little different, but initially that was the impression I got of it. Of course, Frey actually is from New York, that most wonderful of cities, and the game starts there, before events lead to her waking up in this fantasy world, suffering from a terrible calamity, Survivors all hold up in a single city, the outside world succumbing to the break. Animals and life forms corrupted into mockeries of their original forms. What this boils down to in gameplay is that Frey is able to traverse the outside world, leading her to run missions for those in the city, whilst following her own agenda of returning home to the real world. Thanks to her bond with the enigmatic cuff, she is able to zip around the world at high speeds using magic, fight against monsters using various abilities. The starting set of magic you find yourself with is closer to making the game like a third person shooter than anything else. You have different spells which function like different guns, close range, long range and so on. You can combine your right trigger offensive spells with left trigger defensive or support spells along with standard dodge and parry mechanics. Cuff will lower incoming damage and if you time it right you can unleash a counter attack. Although the game gets a lot more interesting once you start to unlock the additional sets of magic abilities, such as the Fire Sword magic, which gives you melee abilities on top of your starting purple magic. Overall, the gameplay is entirely serviceable on this front. Its implementation is more elegant than 15's combat, from what I remember 15, and the idea is interesting, but I think the execution could do with some refinement. The game grades you on each combat scenario, which I found baffling, is Devil may cry, this is not. Whilst enemies have a basic form of resistance to certain spells or damage types, I never really found myself bothering to do anything beyond the bare minimum required, as the combat isn't satisfying enough to warrant it. Nor are the sort of hitboxes and detection, just the sort of general tightness of the game's combat is not there for me. And yes, I know that is a very nebulous and vague term, but sometimes combat just doesn't feel great. Unfortunately, the list of the game's merits is a rather short one for me. There's some nice animations and I appreciate what they were going for with the combat, even if it didn't fully realise the vision. Sure and outside idea? of the gameplay, I mean, the menu offers a lot of nice trouble? features and accessibility yeah. options. I was also playing the game using my new PS5 controller I picked up recently, and I enjoyed the way it made use of the pad's features. Visually, the game has some nice character models and visitors, but it's extremely inconsistent. There were moments the game looked nice, and moments it looked awful. It varied a lot, sometimes even in the same scene it would go from looking nice to bad. Some character models were impressively detailed, with realistic hair, and at other times those same models looked uh, nightmarish, which I think mostly boils down to the lighting, perhaps. Likewise, the lighting engine was able to cast some scenes in very moody, fantastical arrays of greens and blues, but any time it was emulating reality, the golden glow of the afternoon or cold mornings in New York, it looked a lot less impressive. There wasn't even really a day-night cycle in the game either from what I recall, which makes it even more bizarre. If you only have set lighting conditions, I would have assumed that makes it easier to simulate a pleasing aesthetic, instead of walls that are sort of in shadow, but glowing blue for some reason. As for the game's writing and story, well, the best thing I can say about it is that I found no fault with most of the game's performances and voice acting. The story wholly failed to catch me and I put most of the fault there on Frey herself. It is entirely possible that, despite the fairly generic setup of a doomed fantasy world, I would have engaged more with it had I enjoyed the main character, or any character. 
See, Shadowbringers had a somewhat generic, doomed world plot at surface level 2, but it isn't the premise that engages. It's the execution, far more important than having a uniquely appealing premise. And this story hinges so heavily on Frey, the crux of everything. And yet, from her first moment, she just isn't a likeable character to me. Indeed, the only thing I really liked about her was that she took care of a cat. And it's possible they were going for the lovable rogue sort of premise, but I really don't know. The fault with that is that a lovable rogue is a character you like in spite of yourself, even though you know they're kind of a douchebag. Like Han Solo or Jack Sparrow. Being charismatic or charming helps. Frey is not. She's honestly not much of anything. There's no real personality there. There's no character. Whilst it's by no means the be all and end all, you can run Frey through the Plinkett test real quick. Describe the character without mentioning her appearance, her skills, her plot relevance, or her relationships. And um, what do we get? Not a lot. If you want your main character to be the emotional core of your story, and indeed carry it on her shoulders, you need to write her in a way that engages the audience. On top of that, Forspoken's writing is full of lines that just come across as embarrassing, and there's a clear lack of conciseness. The game will often give you a bunch of dialogue explaining something, sometimes letting you skip parts of it, or all of it, but then it will summarise it for you anyway, so you get the same information told to you like three times in a row, and that summary is often long enough to require a summary of its own. All in all, it was just hard to care about anything when it came to the story. Do you remember in Gears of War 2, where characters would do the walk and talk thing? If you pressed back in that game whilst they were doing it, Marcus would say like, enough, or shut up, or whatever, and keep going. This game would have benefited from something like that so much. If you gave us an interactive cutscene where a character starts waffling on about the generic backstory of the doomed world that I didn't really care about, and you can just have Frey go, okay, bye, and leave. That would have been very entertaining. See, it's kind of endearing at times when a character doesn't really care about the exposition. I mean, again, to draw parallels with uh, Jack, he, <laughs> he didn't give a damn who those people were. He just wanted to kill Chaos. And that single-mindedness of his was endearing, in a way. Frey's just bland at best and annoying at worst. The game itself, though, will probably take you between 10 and 20 hours to beat if you focus just on the main content. There is side content in the open world, like detours or side quests. I must admit I had zero desire to do any of them other than one that just had me following a cat around. But if you were thorough about it, you could probably knock the playtime closer to 40 or 50 hours if you really want to get everything out of it you can. Yes, there are multiple difficulty modes too, but I'm not sure how much meaningful replayability that would add. Sadly, Forspoken just isn't a very good game. I struggle to find the good in it, beyond the aforementioned points like some of the animations and the accessibility options. The combat's an interesting idea, but not implemented as well as it should be. The graphics, the visuals, they have their moments, particle effects in particular being the game's strongest visual flair. The performances of the voice actors and such are solid. As for the music, I don't remember any of it, which means it was neither offensively bad nor memorably good. Bit strange for Square Enix gamers, those are usually somewhat well known for having, well, memorable and good soundtracks. But going past vocal and musical performances to the performance of the game engine, well, that point's rather more dire. Now, full disclaimer, my PC is from 2017 and sporting a 1080 Ti, so by no means was I expecting to max this game out or anything. But you know there's something wrong if a game looking the way this game does can't hit a consistent 60 FPS on the lowest settings running around 480p. That to me suggests some deeper issues with the game. Whether I was at 1440p or 480p, the performance wasn't really scaling in a way that you would expect it to. And yes, that does suggest to me some deeper issues if it's unable to scale at all to older machines. I'll point out, I'm able to run pretty much every game I try to play at 60 FPS, even if I have to drop some of the settings down here and there. Something has gone very wrong with Forspoken, and I don't know what, but it's important to take older machines into account, you know? The fact this issue exists makes me think that 
future machines will run into the same problem. The game doesn't scale. It was made for a very specific set of requirements that exist right now, and anything beyond that scope, whether more powerful or less powerful, will mangle the game. At least that's my assumption, I don't know what's going on. I just know that running a game on lowest, at 480p, that doesn't really look all that demanding and getting a frame rate that's still all over the place is indicative of something being messed up. All in all, Forspoken was a rather disappointing affair. I enjoyed Final Fantasy XV, it wasn't perfect, it had a lot of issues, but I can still recommend giving that game a shot. This one though, I can't, especially not right now. If they optimise it, improve the performance, and, well, tighten up the gameplay, then it might be worth it at some point in the future. But as of right now, I'm sad to say this is a clear avoid from me. But, thanks so much for watching, I hope this review was useful, or entertaining, and I will catch you guys real soon. And I am fine with that. Just leave me alone.